um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy that we had the time to um, and space to actually sit down and, and talk about um, this really important issue of wolves. Mm -hmm. um, and since you're such a, um, yeah, for me, it's you, you're the wolf and bird and everything <laughs> guy. <laughs> um, so I'd, I'd really like to, to ask you kind of to tell a little bit about your what's your relationship with wolves and how you got into that and why the wolves are so important to you it's a big topic <laughs> <laughs> i mean like ever since i was a child i was very very drawn to all kinds of animals i mean like i couldn't i couldn't i, I forgot about my parents existence as long as there was an animal in front of me then i would just go go for that <laughs> all the time uh, and i felt like i was often like I, it, was, it was very easy for me to become the animal that I encountered. So it was like my parents were often like telling me like, "Hey, you have to stop behaving like an animal," because as a child I was always behaving like all different animals that I encountered or had seen on the nature mm. documentaries. I started becoming them like full on. <laughs> 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 that was my 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 favorite uh, habit as a child, mm. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to get to know everything about the. Uh, all, all sorts of animals. I was looking at many different nature documentaries, reading a v lot of books, um, especially when I was approaching teenager I was starting to really go out in the woods on my own and uh, I remember it was a very strong encounter I had with roe deer. I mean roe deer is quite common and most people see even yeah. in their gardens sometimes but, uh, but still it was such a strong encounter I had with when I, one was stopping like just a few meters from me looking straight into my eyes and I was like okay I really need to go f deeper into the woods and really connect more so that's how it kind of started and uh, during my teenage years I spent a lot of time out alone just learning to track without any human teacher just tracking by observing and and uh, learning the different habits of all the different species in the environment like moose, wild boar, deer, foxes, badgers, beavers, all, all kinds of animals. Mm. That's how I also got into the imitation of bird sounds by listening to different birds around me and just try to replicate their sounds. Mm. And yeah, wolves was like a dream when I was a teenager, mm. like oh, it was such a, would be such a big thing to encounter a wolf. And there was a wolf pack in the in the forest around there, but I didn't know so much about them or where they were. And there, it was only occasionally I found some tracks of them. So it was like I was hoped that I would encounter them. But wolves in Sweden, or in general, but in Sweden especially, very very shy. Mm. It's hard to to get close to them unless you really really know what you're doing. I even encountered lynx during my teenage years. <laughs> they're even harder animal to, to find wow. <laughs> than the wolf. Because they're so uh, secretive, but mm. I encountered had some very like random encounters with lynx. Mm -hmm. But wolf, I had to wait until I kind of had moved to this part of Sweden where we are mm. now, in uh, the easy the western corner of the Stockholm region, bordering Sörmland. And there was no wolves when I moved here. I moved here because of yeah Johan and the other primitivist mm. people. <laughs> At the start, then I noticed there was a lot of other alternative people around, and so I got into the to the vibe and decided after a while that yeah I'm gonna kind of hang out here a lot. So I had like different homes here, and some periods I didn't have a home, but I was in the forest or staying with friends, and yeah, yeah so it kind of still had base here. It was like a year after I moved here or something that the first wolves appeared in the area. Mm. It was like um, first one wolf and then the second one and they formed a couple so they started a new pack here So from that on I started together with Johan and a couple of others to track them and winter especially and get to kind of get to know their movements in the landscape and um, And the year after I had my first encounter with one of the wolves like a young mm. um, teenage wolf you can say and since then it's been quite a lot of experiences with the wolf like um, with this specific wolf pack yeah it's like i gotten it's like we gotten to know each other it's like mm. now i had so much encounters so it's like the alpha pair in this pack they know me as a person so it's like 
he's still human. It's not that comfortable, but it's okay. He's, he's not that dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of that's how the, the way they treat me. Yeah, yeah. But wow. I had some 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 specific encounters which were very very strong. Like it, when you feel it's like a, this is like a spir really spiritual mm -hmm. experience. It's really affected me deeply. Mm. And it's 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 a lot probably about like really um, going a lot into letting everything of yourself go and just really becoming a part of the landscape and part of the animal uh, <laughs> uh, world somehow mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. to actually then receive that gift of, of seeing a wolf or even more than one. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like tuning into what I would call wolf awareness. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's when I really go into it, it's like I started to I start to think like a wolf. I can even mm. look at the map or just look at the landscape. If I was a wolf, where would I like to be? Mm. And like also trust my gut feeling in that and yeah. find the right places and also see the subtle details that kind of reveals where the wolves are, like yeah. tracks in a certain area, moving in a certain pattern or mm. often asleep out at night listening and Maybe hear like the wolves conversate with each other, like mm. either howling, which you can hear on a longer distance. Sometimes, if I'm really on the right spot, even hearing like young wolves play fighting, you can hear the sounds of it and kind of locate where, okay, they are in this area. And, yeah, and like use all this n knowledge uh, in combination with an open awareness of their their way of being. Mm. And it helps to be spending a lot of time in the forest, especially like sh uh, peeling off the uh, all the barriers we put up when we are in civilization. So if after a few days in the forest, it's even easier because then I really tuned into to that. And it's like the wolf feels that oh now he's ready. So it's like now he's <laughs> now he's uh, away from that uh, mm -hmm. uh, extreme yeah. mind chatter, and like now he's more here. Mm. Now he's more forest. <laughs> <laughs> like he's just like an animal then. And mm. Sometimes it feels like the wolves just treat me as another animal in the forest. Mm, that's really awesome. <laughs> um, so what would you say, um, what you learned from like in your relationship with uh, this wolf pack especially, or wolves in general? Oh, there's just so much, it's hard to put into <laughs> into a few sentences, just what... I mean, for me to connect with the wolves, it's like it brings me a very deep sense of meaning. Mm. It's like uh, I feel it's like there's no coincidence that the, the Native Americans used to call the, refer to the wolf as the teacher, because mm. it's like I feel like I learned so much from them about myself mm. and about my connection with the natural world and with my uh, ancestors' way of being. Yeah. And, uh, also, for me, it's like almost addictive. Like, like when you got to start to know how the how the wolves function, like mentally and also their personalities, it's like you just want more. You just want to know more about them. Mm. <laughs> so it's like it's like re reading a really really interesting book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. just following their tracks is like to read an entire book. It's yeah. like like for instance, when you have the snow, you can just follow the wolves for long distances and really see how they use the landscape, how they relate to other animals in the landscape, how they mm -hmm. relate to each other, how they relate to like human structures in their environment. Everything mm. is, is so much to learn just from following tracks for a little while. Yeah. And then it's like the those lucky glimpses when you get to actually have have them face to face. Mm. It doesn't happen every time you go out, but when it does happen it's it's a blessing mm. to to be allowed into their world. Yeah. And that's only possible, I mean, aside from some, like when the wolves are getting more and more into village areas and, and are not so scared anymore, but usually like with a normal, in a normal wolf situation, you are now saying you're not seeing them every time uh, and you're blessed. Other people just don't see them. Yeah. <laughs> you see. Yeah, like so it, it's, it's it's like that long-term relationship that you build with them so that you can actually uh, have more encounters with them, right? Yeah, for instance, if I would go to a completely different wolf pack's mm. uh, territory, I wouldn't know that much about how these specific wolves, their behavior, their their movements in the landscape. Yeah. It would take like some years to really build that up. Mm. So that's why I feel I, I learn more from just 
keep following this one and the same wolf pack mm. instead of like starting like with a completely new wolf pack. Like, yeah. of course, something, some general things I would be able to see if I go to a completely new wolf pack, like knowing roughly how wolves like to use the terrain. I could, like, for instance, look at the map of a completely new area, and if I know that the wolf pack has territory there, I can see, like, okay, if I was be a, would be a wolf, I would like to be in that and that and that spot, and I would probably use these uh, pathways to get through the landscape and so on. Mm. So, uh, of course, you can learn. You can re replicate some things in a new area, but it still takes the time to kind of get to know this specific uh, yeah. wolves and their movements in their specific landscape. Wow. <laughs> like all those intricacies and all that time that we usually don't take to actually get to know people, even like wolf people are yeah. also people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, any kind of living being to really have that dedication of just observing them for such a long time mm -hmm. and building such a deep relationship which takes a lot longer than with any human I feel somehow because it's just a different kind of language too yeah I don't know somehow for me it's been easy like I said this already mm -hmm. as a child I was my parents said me stop behave like an animal <laughs> <laughs> for me it just comes naturally it's like mm -hmm. it's like a way almost like a kind of shape-shifting it's like mm -hmm. you know uh, on a mental level it's so easy for me to just I, I don't even control it it just happens like I, mm -hmm. when I encounter an animal I become like that animal so it's yeah. it's all, almost as like the wolf feel it like okay it's like it's like he's mm -hmm. partly wolf he's, he's kind of <laughs> he understands wolf behavior so it's like it, it's uh, at some points it feels almost like they get really curious and like ah now we really got to to know who, what this kind of creature is. Who is who is that wolf that's shaped like a human? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's like they treat me still like a human, but mm. uh, maybe like he's still a human, but it's a little bit more like a wolf. So mm. kind of okay, but we still yeah. don't like him too close. That's kind of how they <laughs> treat me. <laughs> wow. When I've been very close, they kind of sometimes they just. Mm. Tell me that, mm. like uh, giving some like, <laughs> like tell, just telling me to <laughs> not like in an aggressive way. It's yeah. more like uh, showing we don't feel so comfortable with this. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't felt threatened by a wolf. Yeah, even though on some occasions they have been telling me we don't like that you're this close to where we have our pups, for instance. Mm. Okay. But you've been out so many times alone for longer stretches and there was just that whole story of the big bad wolf is <laughs> just not something that you ever encountered, right? No, like I only encounter that in humans. Mm. It doesn't exist in wolves themselves. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a... Uh, I mean like I slept so many times outdoors like he, and you have the wolves, you know, coming around my campsite in, mm. uh, in the middle of the night. I just hear their footsteps, I hear their their sounds, you know, they're like, for instance, when they're like a bit curious, but still a bit like cautious at the same time, they often whine, like, you can, you can feel dogs when they are in the same same kind of uh, um, emotional state. They like to do this, like, mm. this I've had when wolves come really close at night, for instance, so it's like they investigate but they keep their distance mm. but I never felt it was dangerous yeah I mean like they come there to check me out and then move away like people people are afraid of wolves that live in in, in the towns you know because yeah. they might have seen a wolf cross uh, near town at some point and they might people be afraid of going out in the forest picking berries you know <laughs> and yeah. and uh, I sleep out there in exactly the spots where I know the wolves are m spending most of their time and having them around me in, in the middle of the night like I could have like f five to ten wolves around me in the dark I I feel completely safe yeah yeah, yeah. and and I think that's that's just a really important um, message and story to bring out I mean there are like all those um, encounters of uh, wolves like, like eating sheep or whatever other yeah, like farm course. animals but i mean that's just um, it's yeah. like putting out a buffet and then telling them not to eat it it's kind, kind of that's kind of the thing like <laughs> a sheep is like so much more easy to kill than a deer or a wild boar or yeah. a moose it's just like yeah like you said it's like 
putting out a fully already served buffet <laughs> and, uh, and and then believe that the wolf would just ignore that yeah <laughs> and, and yeah so it's it's just yeah a, a challenging situation for a lot of people around that there are ways to coexist and still have domesticated livestock it's just that yeah uh, in our modern developed countries we've forgotten how to coexist with wolves yeah. it works still in countries that are so it's called less developed I would, it's a very strange <laughs> word but yeah <laughs> country, differently developed yeah. yeah they just haven't forgotten all, all these things that have been forgotten in in these more western cultures yeah and we also didn't have wolves for quite some time well, they well, in big parts of Europe at least they've been yeah. gone for quite a while. Yeah. In Scandinavia, they weren't gone for that long, but still, it's enough to yeah. make people forget. Yeah. So, I mean, you alluded to to it a little, but um, why, when you've been out and like communicating and and learning about so many different animals, why do you feel so drawn to the wolves somehow? I think it's because the wolf is like the animal in the forest that's most like us, like humans. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, when you're faced with the wolf, it's like you, you just feel that there is such a strong uh, uh, animal, like spiritually, and they are so uh, like aware. Mm -hmm. It's like they they can analyze and think and understand things in a way that is kind of closer to how a human kind of understand things than, than many other animals in the forest. Mm. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's maybe that's also one thing that scares people about wolves, because they're so like us, yeah. <laughs> it almost gets scary for some people. But uh, I mean, there's no coincidence why dogs were the first pets of humans, like the wolf mm. was the first animal that were also kind of joining up with humans. Mm. And so we have co-lived. Uh, very very closely like that for I think they they think the first dogs were appearing like four or forty thousand years ago wow it's like during peak of last ice age already <laughs> we were starting to live together with wolves directly in our homes mm. and bef also long before that we must have had some kind of you know interrelating with wild wolves living in our landscapes yeah hmm. so I think yeah, it's, th that's kind of the main thing. Like they're such a fascinating lives, and they are also on top of that very strong symbol of the wild. Like the, I mean, also in, pop in popular culture, they are very symbolic of the wild, the untamed. Yeah. For yeah. me, that's not uh, something scary. That's a positive thing. Mm. For me, it's like a reminder of what we could also. Yeah, I mean that's why they're called the teachers among mm. the Native Americans mm. because they can teach us how to live in balance with uh, with ourselves, with our families and with uh, the rest of nature around us. Mm. And uh, so we have beautiful. so much to learn from from the wolves and that's why I'm so drawn to them. Mm. So that's I think also a big important lesson that that um, yeah we can all kind of get inspired by what you've been uh, doing for such a long time and so what's kind of one thing if someone were to ah, okay I really want to learn about wolves and, and get into that um, what's kind of the first few things that you would recommend people to really get to know them a little better well, that's a it's a hard question. I don't want everyone to run out and <laughs> try to connect with wolves because it's, it's usually not appreciated by the wolves yeah. either. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, like they are not one hundred percent appreciating my presence either, mm. even though I'm following them quite a lot. Uh, I mean, like it, I would say, at first, it requires a lot of respect for them and their space, like not mm. pushing anything, not like uh, tracking them in the wrong way, like trying to seek them up in that way or pushing your way into if you know that where they are in some in a specific area not to like push your way in there because they need their own space mm. and with most wolves they would simply just run away mm. you wouldn't s get close to them I mean this wolf pack relates somewhat different towards me at least mm. it's kind of they gotten to know me and they kind of gotten to know okay he's more like an animal uh, I would say 
just tracking wolves in the snow for instance is a very good way of learning more about them mm. as long as you do it in a conscious way like you're not following trying to find them on the tracks but yeah it takes a lot of awareness to be able to be close to wolves without actually uh, disturbing them like to really be aware of okay in what area would they most likely have their day sleeping spots and to mm. not go in there not disturb and you have to kind of be aware of the subtle signs in nature in general to, to not uh, push them too far mm. but I would say to, to get to know wolves better uh, following the tracks is like kind of the start mm. you get to know so much even without seeing the animal you just yeah. see how they move through the landscape and what they do relating to to other things in the forest mm. yeah and for example uh, like last time we were out together I was so fascinated that you shared also the whole you wouldn't how just willingly when there is when you know that there might be wolves close by because you might be disturbing them just kind of doing any random howling yeah um <laughs> uh, is is actually not not a nice thing to do <laughs> yeah I, i i very rarely howl to wolves i just do that when i really really, really don't know where they are mm. like trying to locate it happens occasionally that i I howl to see if they would do a response. Yeah. You can't be sure that they would they would respond to it either, even yeah. though they might even be in the same area, they might not respond. But uh, the thing is that you're uh, when you're howling, it's like you're also pretending to be another wolf. Mm. So you might they might consider, oh, is this an intruder on our territory? Yeah. If that happens all the time, it just stresses the wolves up. It doesn't it doesn't give you like eventually they will probably stop re stop responding at all. So yeah. Howling too much is not good, so I only do it very, very rarely mm. these days. Yeah. And it's much better to just sleep out in a good, a good spot and uh, wait until they decide for themselves. Like yeah. they're gonna howl together. Yeah. Because for the howling for them is to kind of to show other wolf packs this territory is taken. Like mm. it's also communicating within the pack. Like if some pack members are in other parts of the territory, they communicate over longer distance. And it's also kind of same as when we sing together. It's like a bonding. Mm. You're howling together, so they're bonding together as a family. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> And I guess that's that's a big part to just remember that they're also like plan animals, just like we are. Yeah. We're we're working, we're living together in in, in groups, and they are too. And, That's what's also connecting us somehow, and <sighs> yeah, somehow I feel like that's that's a big message to just bring that out. That how how similar we are to mm. them, and how much we can learn through that to just kind of connect more with our more intrinsic, natural ways of living together and interacting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, so um to sum it up, is there like what's what's your main message about wolves that you wanna communicate to the world? Mm. I mean for me like the wolves are just like representing in a sense all of the wild things that we as humans have been kind of pushing away from ourselves. Like we've pushed pushed nature like trying to force nature to uh, submit to us mm. we are trying to control everything and that's kind of what has brought us into this world of climate crisis and uh, ecosystem collapse and biodiversity loss uh, it's it's not a way that's gonna bring us forward it's a way that's gonna bring us into a destruction so if we want to survive on this planet we have to listen to the wolf or mm. listen to all of nature mm. and the wolf for me is a kind of just an entryway but it's the wolf is a part of an entire ecosystem of many different species that are all needed for function to be there so for me they are just like the messenger they're mm. not uh, I mean the wolf itself is not the uh, <laughs> the god or something yeah. it's just that they are so good messengers for us as humans mm. because they reflect how our relation to nature can be or mm. and how it is now 
And I think that's what's so scary for many people, why they why they feel fear towards wolves or hatred towards wolves because they fear they fear their own uh, inner nature, their connection mm-hmm. with the natural world and their origin, their ancestor ways. Mm-hmm. It's like it's been so pushed aside and hidden away. The wolf just comes us to remind to, comes to remind us about it. And uh, yeah to try to see that that's what's actually happening and not go into the fear and like fearing the wolf the wolf is just messenger fear is already in you you have to go into yourself to your heart and feel what is true Mm. what is the wolf trying to tell me Mm. what is the forest trying to tell me as a whole Mm. thank you so much (laughs) that was amazing I know that you could talk about that for hours, <laughs> but I think yeah, I can get super nerdy with wolves. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.